Hey everyone, in today's iMovie video, I want to show you how to deal with green screen clips inside of iMovie. It's actually built into the iMovie, but it's a little bit hidden. So I wanted to make this video to show you exactly how to find the effect and then a couple other things you got to do with color to make sure everything matches. Now, if you're doing this for very professional reasons, like if you're making TV commercials or if you're making a movie, iMovie is definitely not the tool for that you should use Adobe Premiere or Adobe After Effects for doing any green screen work. I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but I do have a trial link to Adobe Creative Cloud, and then you could watch a tutorial on that if this is really for high-end work. For basic work, iMovie is actually pretty good dealing with green screen. Here I am inside of iMovie, and I'm gonna bring in my clip here, my green screen, and this also worked with blue screen too, if your background's blue. And I went ahead and downloaded one here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this clip and press import. Now I got this from pixels.com and you could actually get the same clip if you want to try this out. So I'll leave the link to pixels.com in the description. And then with this clip, this is all you have to do. Select it and then bring it down here to this area, which is your timeline. Now, if you want to make any edits to this clip, you could obviously stretch it out or reduce the length of the clip, bring the endpoint in. And if you haven't watched my other video on using iMovie and this is your first time using iMovie, make sure you watch the beginner's guide. And I do have a full course on iMovie on Udemy and you can learn everything there is to know about iMovie there. But here's the problem. When you add it here, there is no settings. You could look at all these different settings on top. None of them say anything about green screen. Well, there's one thing we have to do. We have to bring in our background first. What is going to be the background underneath this green screen? I'm going to show you two different ways you could do this. You could go to the backgrounds tab here and they have a bunch of backgrounds here, mostly simple colors here and some maps, but I'll show you how to bring your own background too. I'll start with one of these. We'll just select this one, for example, and bring it down to your timeline. And make sure this is the same length as your video clip. So I'm gonna stretch it out. Now they both match. Now, your background that you brought in has to be underneath the green. So what you need to do is you need to bring your background underneath. So if I grab it and I bring it under, this pushed this over, so I'm just gonna grab this and put it on top. Basically, the order needs to be like this. Background first, then your green screen on top of that. Now, if you select the top, you have another option right here. This option is for cutaways and overlays. If I select it, it's set to cutaways right now, but if I press this dropdown, I now get green or blue screen. If I select this option, automatically it removes the green for me creating this nice green screen effect. But we're not done yet because a lot of times it will not get it right the first time. So you could play around with one of these settings. There is softness and softness sometimes is helpful. Right now it's not really doing anything, but if I go all the way, you see, it's kind of keying out more of her hair. That's called keying when you remove a color. So in this case, I'm okay with where this was by default in the middle. Then you have cleanup. So let me show you a couple of settings here. This one lets you crop the image. Okay, so I'm actually gonna crop the top part of the video. You see what the cropping is doing? You basically wanna crop everything that is not the person. So I'm gonna bring it in into it a little bit more. I could go through it, make sure she doesn't cross any of the sections where I cropped in because if she does, basically it's gonna cut her off like this. So we don't wanna crop in too much, but this is sometimes useful. Sometimes you don't have to do it, but you'll notice sometimes there is areas here that this way you don't have to worry about. Then you have cleanup. If you see any green or blue in sections that are outside, you could go ahead and basically erase them. This is a eraser tool, but you don't wanna do this to your person because it will just make them disappear, okay? And if you make a mistake, just command or control Z brings things back. Okay, that's all you have to do with green or blue screen. And we're still not done yet. We are going to actually make sure the colors match. So to do that, I'm gonna select my background this time. And there's an option here, if you come up here with your background selected, called clip filter, select this. And then under clip filter, select this option right here. 
and you could add some clip filters here to try to match the different clips here. If you don't want to use these pre-existing filters, this is probably a better option too right here. Color correction, you could just go ahead and make adjustments like if your person is warmer or more orange, you could go ahead and do that to your background. If it's cooler, you could bring it down. It really depends. You're just trying to match the background and the person in front of the background to kind of be in the same world by adjusting some of these colors. And there's this option over here that lets you do all of this kind of automatically. If you select it and press match color, what it lets you do is the background selected, but now I want to click something from the foreground, which is my person. So I could bring in my eyedrop tool. You see that little eyedrop icon and I'll select my foreground and it's going to do a good job matching the two. So this is what I would go with, but I wanted to show you the filter and the manual option, but matching color seems to really work well and then press the check mark. Now let me show you how to actually do this with a background that is not the ones that are in iMovie. You want to bring your own this time. So let's go over here back to the media tab and in the media folder, you could press this import arrow and it's going to let you import from your download folder. Now, let me just show you where I get my backgrounds and I use Shutterstock because they got the best possible backgrounds. Pexels usually doesn't give me green screen backgrounds that I'm looking for. So I do actually buy them from Shutterstock and I have a lot of these, especially for videos that I make where the office needs to be a background. These basically, what's nice about them is they come blurred. So blurred background just makes everything look more cinematic and they have a ton of different ones. So I just looked up office background and I've bought maybe 10, 15 different versions of these, like these without people in it. That's what you want. You don't want people in it. This is kind of nice, but I usually get these blurry ones and you could try it out. You could press download and try it out before you buy it. But I already bought one, so I'm going to go ahead and import it in right now. So I'll go back to iMovie over here and I'm going to press this arrow and bring it in. And I have this Shutterstock image on my desktop and I'm going to press import selected down here. And so all I have now is the green screen and that image. Now, if I just drag the image, I could do the same thing if I didn't have this background. But if you drop it on top of the background, it lets you replace right here. So I could just replace it. And then it's going to let me stretch it out. So when there is no background, by the way, it's going to look black like that. So I'm going to make sure I grab the end here and stretch it out to match my clip length here. And it looks like you added some kind of an effect to it. So I'm going to select it and it looks like you added this crop effect. So if you select crop and make sure it's just crop to fit here and then press the check mark by default, when you add an image, he adds a Ken Burns effect. If you add a video, it doesn't do that though. I'll press the check mark. Now, this is my office background. Now, again, I need to match the color. So I'm going to select that new background image I brought in. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select this option right here to match color. So choose match color. And then I'm going to go back with my eyedropper tool and choose the person. And you could see it made the background much warmer here. And then press check mark to apply that. And now it looks a lot better. And if the size wasn't right, select this option right here and then come up to the crop filter here. And then you could actually crop this however you want. It doesn't have to be how it cropped it by default. If you need to zoom in more, go ahead and crop it this way. Press the check mark and it's going to apply that zoom to your background to make sure it fits better. Now it doesn't fit quite right because now she looks too small compared to the background. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that and bring it back to how it was. So it was working fine. And to really get this looking perfect, what you really need to do is make sure you light your person with some idea of what the background is going to be. Because if you know what the background is going to be, then the light can come from the same direction and things like that. But if you're only doing this in the edit, just pick a background that matches the direction of the lighting or in this case, the windows are in the back. So it's okay that she has shadows on this side and the lights coming from this side. It actually matches this world. And when you're happy with your edits, as usual, go to file and then go to share and then choose YouTube or Facebook here to get this export dialog box. Make sure you select the largest format, 4K, for example, in this case, and then go ahead and export your movie.
And that's everything you need to do inside of iMovie to get a good green screen result or blue screen result. But like I said in the beginning, if you're doing this for professional reasons, I recommend moving to the Adobe products. Adobe Premiere actually does a really good job with a filter it has built in, but it gives you a ton of options with what you could do with your green screen. I hope you found this useful. Make sure you check out my course on iMovie where I cover literally everything iMovie has to offer you step-by-step step from beginner to advanced all-in-one course. That's available in the link below. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.